To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to today's lesson. So, in the previous chapter, I explained to you all the functioning of a direct current motor by doing an activity. You all were able to understand the force generated on a current carrying conductor that is placed in a magnetic field when the current flows through a coil. The force acts in opposite directions that is like a couple because of that the coil starts rotating. So that is how a basic motor functions. And there the current that we supply we used a battery so it is a direct current and because of that we call it a direct current motor. So the same principle is used to make direct current motors and that is an application that we discussed before that we discussed the loudspeaker then the second application is the direct current motor. So in this chapter we will start by discussing the main parts of a DC motor. So here we call it the main parts of a DC motor. So like I said DC means direct current, direct current motor. You all are familiar with these terms AC and DC, AC alternating current, DC direct current. So here we, need, we supply direct current to the motor and the motor rotates. For that to happen these are the parts that are needed. So first, we have the armature. Now when we say armature, now this is similar to the coil that we used in the activity. Now in the coil you can remember we remove half the insulation. So the current flows there, the coil rotates half the turn. Then with that same force it was able to complete the turn because it was a very light coil. I mentioned that to you all. The coil is very light. But if you want to use it in a motor, the motor has to rotate a heavy load. Now just imagine a ceiling fan. The blades of the fan, they are heavy. So they need to be rotated by the motor. Then of course the motor, the coil should be able to bear, bear that load. So that means the coil has to be on a hard surface. It should be able to bear that load. So to do that what we do is we use a soft iron core. There is an iron metal, a soft iron metal that is used as the core and on top of that the conducting wire is wound. So the coil is made around the soft iron core. So that soft iron go core provides a support and it helps to bear the load. So the coil, the wire coil plus the soft iron core together is known as the armature. So in normal DC motors there is a coil much like the coil you used in the previous activity. And then since a motor is used to rotate some load, the coil of a DC motor must be strong enough to withstand an external load. Therefore, the coil is wrapped around a steel iron core as shown in the figure. This coil together with the core is known as the armature. So now here you can see. Now this part of course is the axle of the motor. This is actually the axle. Now this will be connected to the load. So then that will rotate. So here what you see here. This is the coil, wire coil. And inside that, now what is there outside is actually the magnet. Inside you get the soft iron core. So both together, this copper wire coil wound around the soft iron core is what we call as the armature. The coil together with the core. So here you have to see coil together with the core is the armature. 
and the function of the armature is to give rise to a rotation by generating a couple when a current is passing through it. So that is the function of the coil with the soft iron core is the armature. So earlier it was only the coil that rotated. Here the armature is going to rotate and that is possible because there will be a couple of forces acting on it. Is that clear students? So that is the first part of the direct current motor. What I will do is I will go to the lab and show you all this armature to you all. Okay students, so like I told you all, I will show you the parts of the motor. First it is the armature. Now here I have different parts that I have removed from different motors. So the first one here you can see students in this part of the motor. Now this we will be discussing as the magnets. Can you see the silver color covering here? It is not a complete circuit. Here you can see it is split. Here also again you can see it is split. Not a full circular covering. Again here you can see it is split. So that is actually the magnet that uh, we will be discussing after this inside the magnet. Now can you see these copper wires? The copper wire it is coiled around a soft iron core. That is what we call as the armature. Can you all see these copper wires nicely coiled in this direction also? You can see here you all can see the copper wires coiled that is the armature. The copper wire coil around a soft iron core is what we call as an armature. So there is another motor here in this also here you can see like I showed you all these are the magnets these are the magnets here you can see this copper color the wire coiled that is the armature. So that is one part of the motor. Okay students, so you were able to see the armature in the lab. So you saw the copper wire coil and there will be a soft iron core inside it. Now if it is a small motor in the lab I showed a small motor. It might not have been clear to you all but if you get the chance you can get a small motor even from a toy car you can open it up and you can have a look at it. And also if not there are chances for you all to look at a motor then you can observe this armature more clearly. So with that students I am going to move on to the next slide. The next part is the magnetic poles. Now these are the magnetic poles. So we need a magnetic field no? So magnetic field is required to exert a force on a coil when a current flows through the coil. In normal DC motors, this magnetic field is obtained by poles of a permanent magnet arranged around the armature as shown in the figure. So to arrange it around the armature, you need poles like that. Now in the previous diagram, I told you all, you have the armature inside. Around that, this is the cover, but around the armature, we have the poles of the magnet. So when the poles are arranged, this is how they do it. Now if this is north, then this becomes south, this is also south, this again will be north. So the two, now you can see four poles of the magnet. So if it is four parts like that, it will be north, south, north, south. That is the way the magnet poles are arranged. This pole and this pole both will be north. This pole and this pole both will be south. But alternatingly you will have north and south, north and south. That is how they arrange the magnetic poles around the armature. So that will provide the magnetic field. You should know the function of each part of the DC motor, direct current motor. So the armature is the soft iron core with the coil around it that has to rotate when there is current flowing through it and when it is placed in the magnetic field. So that will help to rotate the load. So you have seen the magnetic pole students. We will go to the lab and have a look at these 
magnetic poles that are present in a direct current motor. So then the magnets. Now these are magnets that are in circular shape but it is not a continuous circle. It is not a continuous ring magnet but parts like this in the shape of in a circular shape. So here you can see it is a magnet. So here in these motor students you can see this is the magnet that is around the armature. So I showed you all this is the armature here the copper color wire around that is the magnet. So inside it has the magnetic field. In this also you can see this is the magnet but it is not continuous you can see the splits there. You can see it split there not a continuous magnet. So with that one no. So here you saw the magnet students these are permanent magnets. So they are in the like a half circle shape those are the permanent magnets. That is another important part of a motor. Okay students. So you saw the magnetic poles as well. So with that I will move on to the next part of the direct current motor that is known as the commutator. Now this is something you all need to understand. This is related to the direction of the force. Now just recall what we discussed when we used these two the coil. When we use the coil in the activity you can remember students we removed only part of the insulation. Why? Then only the coil will rotate completely in one direction. What happens there? You can remember the current flows this way, this way. So the coil rotates like that. But when it comes to after, half turn, half a turn, turn what happens? No current flow, current flow, therefore the coil rotates continuously. A similar requirement is there in the direct current motor also. We need the armature to rotate continuously. But you have to remember students in a direct current motor, the motor is connected to a load. That is why we use the armature. So there you can't use the, you can't stop the current flow in flowing to the next half of the cycle. The current has to flow continuously but the direction of the current should change. After half a turn also the current has to flow this way and this way, not in the opposite direction. Is that clear students? So to make that happen, we use the parts called the commutator. So we'll try to understand what that is. Now let's say, so now we have a circuit where we supply current to the coil. Now here you can see students, the current is going to flow this way, this is the positive terminal, negative terminal, current will flow in from this and then come out this way. Now like I said, if you have the armature like this, let's say it rotates half a turn, then what will happen? What was on this side will go to the other side. There of course, there will be a problem where the current will has to will flow in the opposite direction. So because of that there will be no continuous rotation. The armature will start moving this way and this way. So to prevent that what we do is at this point. So what we use is we use two brushes. Now the brushes are connected. These are brushes. They are connected to the power supply but there will be two half rings like that. If I draw it in a bigger diagram you have the brushes like that 
and two half rings. Now these two rings are known as the commutator. So what will happen is the armature will be connected to the commutator. So what happens? When the armature rotates, the ring on this side will go to the other side. The ring on this side will come. They will change places. So because of that, the current will flow continuously. If I show it with a different color. Now let's say if this is the second ring. Now after half a rotation, what will happen? You will have the ring, this on this side and the other rings. Other half will be here. We will still have the brushes and you will have the armature connected that way. So initially current flows this way, this way and it flows back in this direction. But when there is rotation, now if we did not have these half rings which are known as the commutators or split rings, these are known as split rings. current would have flown in the opposite direction. But here that will not happen. Still the current is going to flow in this way. So because of that current will flow that way and come back in this direction. So the armature will continue rotating in the same direction. Is that clear? So this is the introduction to commutator students. Again when I show you all the model of a motor and I will explain there again how the armature rotates with the direction of the current flow with the diagrams there you will be able to understand it even more clearly. But for now remember like we did in the previous activity where we remove only half of the insulator so that the coil will rotate continuously the same way in order to make the armature to rotate continuously, what we do is we connect the armature to two split rings like that. And they are known as the commutators. These split rings are in contact with brushes. Like I told you all, this is the brushes. So because of that, now current will flow into the brush. Brush is in contact with the split ring. So from the brush, current will flow to the split ring that is connected to the armature. So after half the turn, even when the split rings change position, still the current flow will occur in the same direction. So because same direction in the strain students, you all have to remember current flows this way. That is what I mean by same direction. But through the coil, current is going to flow in the opposite direction. So because of that, the coil will rotate continuously. So like I said, you will understand that more clearly when I show you all the model and explain it to you. So if we go back to the information, in the motor you constructed, the insulation was removed only on one side of the wire near the ends. That was because the coil would rotate in two opposite directions if the insulation is removed completely. So this is something I told you all, you can remember that. Therefore, in your motor, the current flows through the coil only in one half of each cycle. When the current flows only during half a cycle, the load that the motor can rotate is restricted. Very important. So coil only in one half of each cycle. When the current flows only during half a cycle, the load that the motor can rotate is restricted. Therefore, a more suitable way for the current to flow would be to let the current to flow in one direction during half of a rotation cycle and to let the current to flow in the opposite direction in the next half cycle. 
a commutator is used to alternate the direction of current flow in this manner. Here it is important to remember students through the coil, through the wire coil. That's very, very important. So it is not the current flow into the motor because you all know it is a direct current motor. So when we say direct current, the direction of the current flow does not change. But inside the motor, through the wire coil, that is through the armature, the current flow, the direction changes. We will be understanding that using the diagrams later. But I have given you all an introduction. I am sure you can understand that. So this is important, a commutator is used to alternate the direction of current flow when they say in this manner, that is here, in the coil. A more suitable way for the current to flow would be to let the current to flow in one direction during half of rotation cycle and let the current to flow in the opposite direction in the next half cycle. So, like I said, now we have the, so here, like I said, we have the brushes, this one, then the two split rings and the connecting wire that is connected to the armature. Now let's say like I did in the previous one, he also I'll use a different color just to denote the side only. Now you can see two brushes, two split rings and this is the armature coil which I have drawn it this way. The color is just to see the direction. Now initially when current flows through it, you have the positive and negative terminals. Like I told you all, current flows this way through this split ring here and here. Now these are the two arrows and these two arrows that are important to you. Direct current flows only in one direction, always from here to here. But at this point you can see current goes in this way, comes out this way. So you know there will be a couple acting in a certain direction. But after half the turn, what will happen there? Again if you look at this particular structure with the brushes, with the brushes, the split rings, the armature here still it is going to be the same way the current is going to flow. Right. Now still the current will flow this way and come back this way. But if we look at the split rings, now this is after half the turn. The positions have changed. The split ring that was here has now come to this point. Then what will happen to the current flow? Current will flow in this direction and this direction. Why still the current flow, direct current has to come this way, will come to this brush. This particular split ring is con in contact with the brush. So because of that current flows in that direction. Now compare the direction in this and that. The black color split ring and the black color part side of the coil. Here current flows downwards this way. The arrow is downwards. Here you can, here you can see the arrow is downwards. But here you can see the arrow is upwards. Here also you can see the arrow is 
upward. The same way, if you take this side, here the current is flowing this way, but here the current is flowing out. If we just label it as A, B, C, D, that is also more clear. Let's say A, B, C, D. Now here through A, B, current flows from B to A. But here, current flows from A to B. The same way, here current is flowing from D to C. But there current flows from C to D. That is the opposite direction. B to A, A to B. On this side, D to C, here C to D. So that is the meaning when they say the commutator helps to alternate the current flow through the coil. Alternate the direction of the current flow through the coil. So that is the function. So that makes sure that the armature rotates continuously. And then it can rotate the load as well. Is that clear students? So for that we have the commutator that is the split rings and the brushes together. Is that clear? So now if you look at it you can see. When the current flows only during half a cycle, the load that the motor can rotate is restricted. Therefore, a more suitable way for the current to flow would be to let the current to flow in one direction during half of a rotation cycle and to let the current to flow in the opposite direction in the next half cycle. A commutator is used to alternate the direction of current flow in this manner through the wire coil or the armature. Is that clear? So you have to keep that in mind. The current that we supply is direct current. But because we have the commutator, we are able to alternate the direction of the current flow through the wire coil. So with that, I'll move on to the next slide. Now here. Here, of course, you can again see the diagram that is given in your textbook. So, here you can see these two components. Those are the carbon brushes. Now, why do we need carbon brushes? Because you all know carbon conducts electricity. So, we need to have something that can conduct electricity. So, that is connected to the power supply. Here you can see the two ends. Then here you can see the split rings, you can see the split rings. So here like I said, now here you can see the split rings. Now this is a three dimensional view. The brushes, the split rings are in contact with the brushes and then you can see the two terminals that are connected to the wire coil. Terminals connected to the wire coil and also here we have terminals connected to the power supply, power source. So this side also you can see terminal connected to the power source. So is that okay? You have the split rings, the brushes, then the split rings are connected to terminals that are connected to the wire coil like I explained to you all in the diagram. So all together is known as the commutator. So here you can see the commutator consists of two metallic split rings and two parts known as brushes that can be adjusted to brush against the split rings as shown in the figure. So this part. So that is the commutator. 
the commutator consists of two metallic split rings and two parts known as brushes that can be adjusted to brush against the split rings. They have to be in contact with the split rings. Then only current will pass through it. The two ends of the coil are connected to the two split rings and they rotate with the arm edge. The coil wire coil is connected to the split rings. The two brushes maintain contact with the split rings without rotating themselves. These brushes don't rotate. They are fixed but they are in contact with the split rings. These two brushes are connected to the external circuit that provides current to the motor. Is that clear? So these are the commutator of the motor. So let's go to the lab and have a look at a commutator as well. So the next important part like I told you all is a commutator. Now here you can remember students we already saw the magnet then the armature there. Now if I remove this cover you can see these two parts there like the copper color parts those are actually connected to the carbon brushes. Those are the tiny parts you can see those are the brushes. Now when we fix this into those brushes like that you can see here there is a cover in this motor you will be able to see better this brown color part those are the split rings so you all know rings are normally continuous but here they are split into two halves so here if you really look closely at this part or if you look at a very large motor you will be able to see that there is a split here. So those are the two split rings and when you fix that the same way there are split rings here also. So if I fix it into this the split rings will touch these brushes. So the split rings and the brushes together is known as the commutator. Okay students, so I am sure you all would have seen the commutator in the lab. So you all know the parts of a direct current motor. We need the armature that is the soft iron core with the wire coil wound around it. And then we need the magnetic poles, then the commutator so that the direction of the current flow through the coil can be altered and the coil will rotate, the armature will rotate in the same direction. So three main components of a direct current motor. So with that I will move on to the next slide. So here we look at the operation of a DC motor, a direct current motor. Figure shows the appearance of a motor with all of the above components assembled together. So here you can see here students the poles of the magnet. So these are the magnetic poles. You can remember students when I remove the motor I will again show it to you all. You will see it is contained inside a cover insulator cover plastic cover or it can be a metal cover depends. But you will have a cover inside that only you will get all these. So here of course in the diagram you can see this is the magnetic pole. Then here you can see the armature armature this part the copper wire coil around the soft iron core armature then here you can see the black color one is the brush the carbon brush then this of course is the axle that will be connected to the load so that it will rotate now between this axle and here you have the split rings Now in the diagram you can see the split part. In between the split ring and the axle there is an insulator. So there will be no current flow from the split ring to the axle. To prevent that there is an insulator material. So these are the main parts of a direct current motor. 
again let's go to the lab and have a look at all these parts one more time. So we saw the different component students. Now if you look at a normal motor this is how we will have it. I showed you all this. Now here you can see this part this is the axle. Now that is what is going to rotate outside and let's say if you have a fan connected to that the fan will rotate. So that is the axle. And here this is the cover of the motor. We can remove this part here. Now if you look closely there, we saw the brushes earlier. Those are the brushes and this is a, plas this is a plastic cover. Then here you can see this again is the axle that is connected there. So this is inside. So here you will be able to see around it is the split rings and then I can take this also out. So like I told you all this is the cover. So here we have the split rings and then this is the armature. This part is the armature and the magnets. The ring magnets that is also not continuous. So those are the part students. Same way we can observe in this also. Now this again is a slightly larger motor. You can see the cover here. This is the axle and if I take this out, the two, the magnets are inside like that. So we can take it out. Here you can see the magnets but I showed you all before the magnets. This is the cover. Again in this also you can see the same things. This is the axle. Then here you can see there is the split. The split rings are there. And here you can see the armature, the copper color wire here and the magnet around it. You can see the magnet is not continuous. You can see the armature on this from this side. You can see the armature more clearly. So those are the parts of the motor. I am sure you all can understand that student. Okay student, so with that I will move on to the next slide where I explain the function of the direct current motor. So here you can see figure shows a simplified figure that can be used to understand the operation of the motor easily. I have used part of this to explain about the commutator to your students. So if we look at the diagram, you can see here. Now this is the power source S. What is shown as S is the power supply. Now in the power supply of course you can uh, see students the direction of the current flow is going to be this way because this is the positive terminal that is the negative terminal. So then here you can see the arrow indicates the direction of the current flow. Then what are denoted as P and Q? These two squares, those are the brushes, carbon brushes. And then here you can see the split rings. They are labeled as X and Y. The split rings. So the split rings with the brushes, split rings X and Y, brushes P and Q, all together is the commutator. So that is one part of the motor. Then you can see the commutator is connected to the terminals of the armature, the car wire coil. So here you can see they have shown the wire coil like that. So that is the wire coil. It has been shown this way and it has been labeled as A, B, C, D. So the wire coil. So we have the commutator, we have the wire coil. Now here it is only the wire coil. It's not the armature. You all know armature is the soft iron core. Around that the wire coil, wire is coil. So here only the wire coil is shown and then we need the magnetic poles. Now in the magnetic poles you saw there were four poles north, south, north, south like that arranged alternately but here only two poles are shown to you so that you can easily identify the direction of the uh, magnetic field and the current flow and all that. So you have the north here, south there. So then what happens is when the current flows through it, the wire coil, you can see A, B, C, D rotates in this direction. The direction of rotation is also 
shown to you all. So, this is just a model, a figure to understand the functioning of a, a motor. So, after the rotation, what can you see here? The position of the wire coil has changed. A, B, C, D. Now, earlier it was A, B, C, D this way. Now, it has become D, C, B, A. If you take the direction of the current flow, you all know current is still flowing this way. But you can see here, student. Now, in this one, current flows from S to P, then to X, then A, B, C, D, then again to Y, Q and back to the dry cell. But here, the position of the two rings. Now, here can you see? X and Y have changed. Why? Because the coil has rotated half a turn. And now you have D, C, B, A. Earlier it was A, B, C, D. It has rotated half a turn. So we have D, C, B, A. And also along with that, the two split rings. Earlier X was on the other side. Y was here. Now Y is there. X is here. So they have turned after half the cycle. So, modeling the operation of a DC motor, both are modeling the operation of a DC motor, but after half a turn. Now, from here to here, after half turn. So, then we have the direction of rotation, still it is the same. So, how can we find the direction of rotation? Using the Fleming's left hand rule. So, before we go into that, we will look at the interaction, introduction. Figure shows a simplified figure that can be used to understand the operation of the motor easily. In the figure, the coil of the motor is shown by a single loop. So, coil is shown by a single loop A, B, C, D. The coil is placed between two magnetic poles. The coil is connected to the split rings X and Y while the brushes P and Q are connected to the battery S. Is that clear? So now we will consider this as the initial position. So here you know you can see the current flow. What will be the path of current? It will start from S battery then it goes to P then split ring X, then in the loop you can see A, B, C, D. I will write it together. Then from there you can see it comes to split, split ring Y, then Q and back to the battery. That is the direction of the current flow. Is that clear? So then if we apply the Fleming's left hand rule, Consider only AB. What is the direction of the magnetic field? North to south. Index finger, magnetic field. What is the direction of the current flow? It's going into the conductor. That is A to B. So there you will have it this way. Field in this direction, current going inwards. So which direction is the force? force is acting downwards. So, if I denote the force that is acting downwards. At the same time, consider this part CD. Still the magnetic field is the same, but look at the current flow. AB, CD, AB, CD. So, CD current flow is coming out. So, the thumb points upwards. So, they are what happens? It rotates upwards or it moves upwards. Is that clear student? So here the force is upwards. So now can you see if we have the coil this way it's going to move like that. So that is why the direction of rotation is going to be clockwise rotation. Is that clear? That is up to half a turn. Once it goes from this to this position, that is what is shown here, you can see the positions have changed. 
Now it is D, C, D, A. And here you have the split ring Y on this side, X on this side. Now if I use a different color, now it starts from S, goes to P, that's the same. But here you can see it is Y, then after that D, C, B, A. And then to X, again to Q and back to S. What is the difference do you all see? Now here X, A, B, C, D, Y. Here it is Y, D, C, B, A, X. The way the current flows has been changed. How is that possible? Because of the split rings. So that is the function of the commutator. I'm sure you all can understand that more clearly now. So you need to look at this part. That is the function of the commutator. So it has changed. Now if you look at DC, again the field is this way. Current is going inwards. DC is going to move down. So DC will move down. At the same time, if you take AB, the current flow is going to be from B to A, BA. So feel this way, B to A, BA will move upwards. So BA is going to move upwards. So the direction of rotation is going to be the same. Is that clear, student? So it will continuously rotate. That is something you have to remember. So we'll go to the lab and have a look at the model. I have made this model in the lab so I can show you all how this rotates. Okay, student. So now we will try to understand the operation of a DC motor, a direct current motor. So you all know direct cur current means always the current flows in the same direction. So this is a motor that operates with direct current. So to the motor, the current will flow only in one direction. So we will see how the motor works. Now I have made a model of this motor. I only have the parts that is necessary for you all to understand the function. So here I have made the armature. You all can see here students, I will just show it to you all this way first. You can see A, B, C, D. I have labeled the different corners so that it will be easy for you all to understand the function. Then here you can see to the A and D sides, you have the two split rings attached. So here you can see to A, split ring X is attached and to D, split ring Y is attached. So if I hold the armature this way, here you can see these are the magnets. You all know magnets are also uh, split magnets, the pieces like semicircles. So here north and south ends of the magnets are shown here. And these two are the brushes. Now you all know the split rings with the brush, they will be in contact like that. Now the X split ring is now in contact with brush P. Split ring Y is in contact with brush Q. So these two, these together, the split rings and the brushes together is what you call as the commutator. So these are the parts that we need to understand the function. Now assume that the current is flowing into the motor through brush P. Now you all know that also students, the brush P and brush Q, they are connected to the power supply. The positive terminal of the battery is connected to P. That means the current flows in through P. That is something you have to keep in mind. Current flows in through P. So initially, this is how the armature is going to be. So look at the way, P brush, then X split ring, from there it will come to A, flows to B, then to C, D of armature, and then again split ring Y, Q, and the circuit will be completed. When this happens, 
you have to use your Fleming's left hand rule to identify the direction of the motion of this armature to understand how the armature will rotate. Okay students, so with the model I am sure you have a better understanding as to how the motor works. So we supply direct current, current flows in the same direction only. But the split rings with the brushes, you all know brushes do not move, they are connected to the power supply, whereas the split rings they can rotate and also they are in contact with the brushes. So that current can flow into the wire loop. So here instead of our armature, we are using a wire loop or a wire coil, you can say wire loop. So in the wire loop, you were able to understand the direction of the current flow. That is split ring X, then A, B, C, D to split ring Y. Then A, B moves downwards, C, D moves upwards and the direction of the rotation is clockwise. After half a turn, it is going to be Y, D, C, B, A. Here you have Y. DCBA to X. So then of course DC moves down, BA moves up. So still the direction of rotation is going to be clockwise. So the loop, the wire loop will continuously rotate. But the commutator makes the current to flow in opposite or alternate directions. A to B here B to A. This side it was C to D. Now it is D to C. Or you can see here A, B, C, D. They are D, C, B, A. Is that clear students? So with that I will move on to the next slide. So here we ha I have given the same diagram that was given to you. This is the first part of the rotation. You can again see the switch the two split rings, the brushes P and Q, then you can see the direction of the current flow A, B, C, D, the magnetic field from north to south and the direction of rotation is shown to you. So this is the initial stage. So if we look at the explanation given, when a current is made to flow through the motor, the current, the current enters the split ring X through the brush P. That is what I explained. And flows through the wire loop A, B, C, D. Reaches the split ring Y and passes to the external circuit through brush Q. So what I explained to you. X, P, A, B, C, D, then Y and Q. The current passes through the loop placed in the magnetic field along the directions A, B and C, D. That is important. The current passes through the loop, the current passes through the loop placed in the magnetic field along the directions A, B and C, D. Find the direction of the force acting on A, B and C, D by applying Fleming's left hand rule you will find that the force on AB acts downwards while that on CD acts upwards. The armature will rotate clockwise due to the resulting couple. Again, just to clarify this, we will go to the lab and use the model. Now consider only this side. Now I have put, made this black in color so you will easily see the difference. Now AB is white, CD I have made it black so that easy for you to see it, observe it when it rotates. So here we will consider AB side or the conductor AB. From the power source to split brush P then split ring X then from A to B. So the director, direction of the current flow is going to be from A to B. So how is it going to move? I will take it up and show you all. Now the field is going to be from north to south, current flow from A to B. So we use the left hand rule 
the middle finger is going to be the direction of the current pointed towards me, A to B, and the field is going to be in this direction, north to south, north to south. So, it's going to be this way. Then, what will happen? Look at the direction of the thumb. That is going to move downwards. So, this part AB has to move down. It has to go down. At the same time, you need to check C and D, this side also. Now, the current that flows from B to C, C to D. So, there what happens? The middle finger is for current towards you all. And the field is also this way, north to south. The thumb points upwards. So, this side will move up. So, what happens? The armature will rotate like this until 180 degrees. Now, can you all see? The AB side has come to this side. CD side is on this side. All this time, the two split rings are in contact with the brushes. But initially, you can remember students, the split ring X, earlier X was in contact with P and Y was in contact with Q. But now, after half a turn, the X is in contact with Q and Y is in contact with so, there has been a 180 degrees rotation. Half a rotation has taken place. And also here you can see the DC side is on this side, AB side is on this side. So, that is how the first half of the turn takes place. Okay, students. So, you were able to understand how the half first half of the turn occurs. Already I showed you all before, but again this is just to show you all part by part. So, then you can see, you will find that the force on AB acts downwards, that's important. You will find that the force on AB acts downwards while that on CD acts upwards. The armature will rotate clockwise due to the resulting couple. So, then what we do is we look at the Next half turn. Let us now consider what happens when the coil and the two split rings have rotated by 180 and their positions are inverted. This position is shown in figure in the next slide. So, I have put that in the next slide. We will move on to that. So, here you can see the positions have changed. What is it? Now, here you can see still the positive and negative terminals are the same, but now y and x are, have changed and here also d, c, b, a, like I explained before. So, at this point, brush p is in contact with split ring y, while brush q is in contact with split ring x. They have changed. Then the current enters from brush P to split ring Y, flows in the direction DCBA and reaches the split ring X and leaves from brush K. So I told you all that the direction has changed. How has it changed? It starts from P, then to Y, then DC. B A then to X and to Q. The position of Y and X and D C B A they have changed compared to the previous one. Now in this one you can remember the direction was starting from P then to X then A B C D to y and to q. So, p and q do not change. Here it is x, a, b, c, d, y and in this one again you can see p and q do not change but here y, d, c, b, a, x. So, we will quickly look at what happens in this half a rotation in the lab and then I will come back and explain the rest. So, once the armature rotates by 180 degrees, 
This is how you will see the setup. Now look at it carefully. Brush P is in contact with split ring Y, then D, C, B, A, split ring X is in contact with brush Q. The north and south poles of the magnet, they are the same. So still the current is going to flow into P. Current will flow into P. So current flow will be from P to Y, then D, C, B, A, X and Q. You have to remember that. Current flows into P, then to Y, then to D, then to C, B, A, X and Q. The current flow direction does not change. North and South Poles also the same. Like earlier, if you apply the Fleming's left hand rule, what will happen? Now for DC, the field is going to be this way, current is going to flow towards me. So the middle finger current towards me, field is going to be in that direction. So because of that CD, the thumb points downwards. The CD has to move downwards. At the same time, in this side, current will flow from B to A. So current flow is going to be towards y'all. Field is going to be this way. The thumb points upwards. So now BA has to move up. DC will move down. So it will again rotate like that. All the while, the two split rings will be in contact with the brushes. So now again it has come back to the earlier position. Recall what we discussed. Early also it was like this. This side had to move down. CD had to move up. So there was a 180 degree turn like that. Again DC had to move down. AB had to move up. So it rotates like this. It will be a continuous 180 degrees rotation. And here students, in the real motor, these will be always in contact with the split rings. This is for you all to understand how it works. So continuously, current will flow and the armature will rotate in a clockwise direction. Like this, it will keep on rotating. Can you all understand that? So this is how a motor functions. A direct current motor, DC motor, the armature is the one that rotates. So to support the continuous rotation of the armature, we have these two split rings connected with the brushes. So that is the commutator, brushes and the split rings together is the commutator and that makes sure that the current flows in one direction without any disruption and therefore the armature rotates in the clockwise direction. Like this, it is going to rotate in the clockwise direction. So with that students, I am sure you all can understand the function of a direct current mode. Okay students, so now with that demonstration, I am sure you all can understand how the armature rotates continuously. So if we again look at this, you can see at this point brush P is in contact with split ring Y while brush Q is in contact with split ring X. Then the current enters from P to split ring Y flows in the direction DCBA and reaches split ring X and leaves from brush Q. In this situation, current flows along the directions DCBA in the coil. Very important. When Fleming's left hand rule is applied, it will be clear that the motion of AB is upwards while that of CD is downwards. Motion of AB is up, upwards and the direction of motion of CD is downwards. So again a clockwise rotation. The resulting couple rotates the armature further in the clockwise direction. Resulting couple rotates the armature 
further in the clockwise direction. Is that clear, student? So, this is how the direct current motor functions. Instead of the armature, we use a loop that is the only difference and instead of the magnetic poles here only north and south are shown but this is a model to understand the function of a direct current mode. I am sure with this explanation and what you saw in the lab with the model you can understand this clearly. Is that okay students? So then with that I will move on to the next slide. So here again students like I told you all to change the poles of the magnet, I have used the same diagram. So here you can see, now in this the batteries are connected in the same way. Now this is the positive terminal, that's the negative terminal. So in, you know the current flow, direction of current flow in the wire loop would be A, B, C, D in this instance. Then after half a turn, after 180 degrees turn, you can see the current flow will be in the direction D, C, B, A. So that is what we discussed before and in these two instances like it's given in the diagram the north and south poles are like this but what we are going to do is we are going to change the poles of the magnet. So if I say change the poles of the magnet, change the poles of the magnet, magnet then what will happen instead of north this will become the south pole and instead of south here this will become the north pole. Now here you all can see students the magnetic field lines are shown there earlier because this side was north the direction of the magnetic field lines is pointed that way but now when we change the poles of the magnet, what will happen to the magnetic field lines? It will be from north to south. So the direction of the magnetic field lines will change. It will be towards this side, north to south. The same thing will happen in this diagram as well. So here this will become the south pole, here this will become the north pole and the direction of the magnetic field will be from north to south. So the magnetic field lines will be towards this side, north to south. So now if we are to look at the direction of the rotation, what do we do? We use the Fleming's left hand rule. So like already you all know, this is the direction of the current magnetic field and the direction of the force. So now direction of current flow, if we consider the loop AB, Current flow is going to be inside but the magnetic field will be this way. So what is going to be the direction of the motion? Now the force is acting upwards. So there the force is acting up, force upwards. The same way if you consider side CD, loop CD, their current flow is outward, still the magnetic field is going to be in this direction. Current flow out, magnetic field this way. So the force is going to act downwards. On this side, the force is going to be downwards. So what will happen to the direction of rotation? So because the force is acting upwards here, the force is acting downwards here, AB will move up, CD will move down then what will happen to the rotation? The wire loop will rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. AB moves up, CD moves down. So it's not going to be this. Direction will be anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise rotation. So here students, like I said, I'm using the same diagram to explain the modification. That is why I am changing, I have changed the direction of the magnetic field. Now I have changed the direction of rotation. So here the direction of rotation is going to be in the anti-clockwise direction because AB moves up and CD moves down. The same way if we apply the Fleming's left hand rule for the second diagram that is after 180 degrees rotation. Now you all can see DC side is on this side, BA is here. Again the magnetic field lines are to this side and the positive terminal is going to be 
here and negative terminal here. So the current flow is again going to be DC BA. That doesn't change. But the magnetic field lines have changed. So magnetic field this way. Magnetic field is going to be from north to south and through the DC conductor, DC loop, the current flows in. So obviously the force is upwards. So here also the force is up. The force is up. On this side, AB part of the loop, current flows from B to A outwards. Magnetic field is that way. So the force acts downwards. So here the force is down force is down here the force is up again what will happen to the rotation dc will move up ba will move down so this will become this way that is anti clockwise direction anti clockwise rotation so if you look at the diagram clearly students, now what is the change I made? The direction of the magnetic field. The poles have been changed. So now here we have north pole, here we have south pole. That is why I changed the magnetic field lines. But the batteries are the same. So there are three factors that need to be perpendicular to each other or three quantities. The current flow, the magnetic field and the force. All these are perpendicular to each other. So the direction of the force depends on the direction of the current flow as well as the direction of the magnetic field. In the previous slide we saw how the direction of the force will change when we change the direction of the current flow. Now you all can understand how the direction of the force changes with the direction of the magnetic field. What will happen if we change both? We change the direction of the current flow. Instead of having the positive terminal here, we change the battery. So the negative terminal will be here and the current flow will be from DC BA in the first instance. And at the same time, we have the north and south poles like that. Then of course students, you all have to understand the direction of rotation will not change. You all can try that on your own. Now from the initial stage, if we change one of the directions, either direction of the current flow or the direction of the magnetic field, the direction of rotation will change. From clockwise, it will change to anti-clockwise. But if you change both the factors simultaneously, that is the direction of the current flow as well as the direction of the magnetic field, then of course the direction of rotation will not change. I want you all to try that as well. So with that students, I'll move on to the next slide. So here this is the energy conversion. In the operation of the DC motor, the electric energy given to the motor is converted to mechanical energy. Why do we say mechanical energy? Now electric energy it is the electric motor, it converts it to mechanical energy. Why? Because rotation of armature. So when there is rotation or movement, what is the energy? It is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is a form of mechanical energy. So the energy conversion is from electric energy to mechanical energy. Because the armature or the motor rotates the load. Is that clear student? So, so far we have discussed the function of the direct current motor, the parts of the direct current motor. I showed you all the parts in the lab and also I explained the working of the direct current motor in the laboratory using the model. So I'm sure with that you all have a good understanding of the direct current motor. So with that students, I'm going to end this chapter and in the next chapter there is an exercise given in your textbook. I will discuss that with you all and I'm sure before I discuss you will do the exercise 
by yourself first and then you will listen to my discussion. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.